Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on quantum statistics. This is video number 40 and I'm going to derive the Bose-Einstein distribution for bosons. So, just to remind you, my website is universityphysicstutorials.com. The previous videos to this, in number 39, I derived the fermi dirac distribution function. In number 38, I derived the Gibbs factor. And in number 35, I derived, uh, or I showed, I suppose, a really neat trick that 1 over 1 minus x is this infinite power series in x. We'll need that, of course. So, let's go ahead. So this, I guess, this is building on from my previous work. So if there's something you don't understand, you should go backwards rather than asking, because I've done it all before. But of course, in general, as well as any questions, I'm uh, more than happy to answer. So, bosons, the, the definition of a boson is something with integer spin. But in terms of occupying states, there is no restric restriction on the number of bosons per state. Whereas if you remember that with fermions, they, they could either be one or zero particles in a state. Whereas with bosons, that isn't the case. There's no restriction on the number of particles. All right, so the probability using the Gibbs, uh, the Gibbs factor and the grand partition function is equal to one over the grand partition function times e to the minus the energy minus the chemical potential times the number of particles divided by kT. Okay, once again, beta is equal to 1 over kT. We call that the thermodynamic beta. Mu is equal to the chemical potential, and that's the energy added to a system when you add a single particle. Just as an aside, by the way, that the, the Fermi energy, which I've derived in the past, is actually pretty much the same as the chemical potential until about 2000 Kelvin. So that's why you'll see people writing, and uh, when they're talking about fermions, they won't actually put in the chemical potential. They put in the, uh, they put in the Fermi level, because it's the same. But anyway, we're talking about bosons, and there is no such thing as really the chemical potential, as we'll see. So let's get the grand partition function. The reason we're going to do that is because the average energy is 1 over z del z del beta. That's what we're going to use. That's the, everything I've been doing so far. So we need to calculate the grand partition function, which is the sum of the Gibbs factors. Uh, minus E minus mu times n over kT the sum of those. That's what it is. So let's go ahead and do that. So the grand partition function is going to be the sum over n e to the minus n outside of epsilon minus mu beta. Or of course I should have written this epsilon the energy is equal to n times epsilon. Epsilon is the quantum of energy is equal to h nu. Okay? Nothing new I would imagine. Nothing new I hope. So, let's go ahead and write that so that it becomes e to the naught plus e to the minus epsilon minus mu beta plus e to the minus 2 epsilon minus mu beta plus e to the minus 3 epsilon minus mu uh, beta and off up to infinity. So I'm sure you know at this stage e to the 2x can be written as e to the x squared. So all of this is, each of those can be written as a square. So this would be to the power of 0, to the power of 1, to the power of 2, to the power of 3, like that. Alright, so this, if we do it that way, we have to recast the problem as follows. Where of course, you, you, you'll see what I'm on about. So we have 1 plus, um, we'll say, x plus x squared plus x cubed off up to infinity, which is 1 over 1 minus x. So in this case, it's going to be 1 over 1 minus e to the minus epsilon minus mu beta. And that is the Fermi-Dirac, or excuse me, the Bose-Einstein occupancy function. Like that. However, it isn't in the case, is, it isn't in the form we'd like it to be. It's not, sorry, I'm after missing, I'm after missing a term here. Excuse me. No, I'm going to take, just take a step back there. I jumped. I jumped way ahead. Well, that wouldn't say way ahead, but that means the grand partition function is equal to one over one minus e to the epsilon minus mu beta. That's the grand partition function. That means that the probability of n uh, is equal to e to the minus n epsilon minus mu beta divided by the grand partition function. Alright, but it isn't in the form we usually, we, we, we'd usually expect, so I'm going to do a bit of 
uh, manipulation. But that's it really. You could you could work with that formula no problem at all. So it's time to do a small bit of manipulation. Okay. So how do we manipulate this? So just to rewrite the problem, we have that the probability is equal to e to the minus n outside of epsilon minus mu beta divided by 1 minus e to the minus epsilon minus mu beta. But the occupancy is the average number of particles per state. So look at my video on average values if you don't understand the next step. So we're saying that the I'm going to call it f of e, okay? That's the occupancy, which is his average number of particles per state. But the definition of the average is the following. Uh, f of n, actually leave it at n for the moment. So it's it's the number of particles multiplied, or the, we'll say your value, multiplied the probability of having that value and adding them all up. That's, that's what it is by definition. So that's going to be equal to zero, the number of particles, multiplied by the probability of zero particles, plus one times the probability of one particle, plus two times the probability of two particles, and off up to infinity. Okay, so that means that the, function, the, the probability is going to be rewritten as follows, zero plus e to the minus epsilon minus mu beta over uh, one minus e to the minus epsilon minus mu beta, plus, I'm going to just write this in green I suppose, 2 times e to the minus epsilon minus mu beta and I'll write one more of course, and this goes off up to infinity. Alright? But that looks absolutely torturous, so it does. It looks like a real pain in the face. And once again, some clever physicist or mathematician said, well, hold up a second, what if we write it saying that x is equal to plus epsilon minus mu times beta? What if we do that? Can we recast the problem in some by doing some random, not random, by doing some clever change of variables? The answer is yes. So if we if we use it, if we do that random or if we do that change of variables, we can recast the problem as e to the minus x like that, two times e to the minus x, one minus e to the minus x, plus three times e to the minus x, one minus e to the minus x, and half up to infinity. Now you'll see in a moment that it can be rewritten, I suppose, as the sum. Uh, from n is equal to 0 to n of n times e to the minus nx divided by 1 minus e to the x. <coughs> Sorry, e to the minus x like that. Alright, so you'll see in a moment why, but I'm going to write it this way. In this particular notation, z is going to become 1 minus e to the minus x. Okay, that's what we said it was going to be. Right, because we know that. Um, that's what the grand partition function is. Okay, stop there. Next, del z del x is equal to e to the minus, uh, sorry, it's equal to plus e to the minus x. Pretty straightforward differential. But remember that in general, z is equal to the sum over n of e to the minus n epsilon minus mu beta. So looking at it in this way, that means the grand partition function is equal to, like I said, the sum over n e to the minus n x. And that means del z del x is going to be equal to the sum over n minus n e to the minus n x. Now, why is that of any interest to us? The reason that's of interest to us is because we compare it to what we already have. This is just some clever recasting of the problem. And if that's the case, if, we, if we're able to accept what we've written, that means the probability becomes the following. Minus 1 over z del z del x. Okay? And if you just do the derivative, we, as we've done, 
it becomes 1 over e to the epsilon minus mu over kt minus 1. And that is our Bose-Einstein distribution function. Okay? And that's it. Now, just to point out, by the way, this, this formula here for calculating minus uh, the probability function, minus 1 over z del z del x, works for both fermions and classical particles. I'm going to do that in the next video. Uh, so the point here is that the Fermi or the Bose-Einstein distribution function is 1 over e to the epsilon minus mu over kt minus 1. Okay, now this this mu here, this chemical potential that might throw you, I'll talk about that uh, probably when I'm discussing the Planck distribution, but not yet. For the moment we can leave it in, it's not a big deal. So that wasn't too difficult. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and also check out universityphysicstutorials.com. Thanks.